You have a student in class that's difficult and you've tried being nice. Now what? So far on Ed Family, we've discussed how some of the best classroom management strategies include knowing students by name, catching kids doing the right thing, having an engaging lesson, and catching yourself if you're finding yourself triggered by not talking to the student when you're not ready to. You can just say, I'm not ready to respond right now, but I will later. You know, another step I didn't mention was proximity. So if there is some misbehavior, as I continue to catch many students who are doing the right thing with positive affirmations, I move closer in proximity to the student uh, without directly looking at the student. And uh, you know, by this point, the student usually gets the hint. Once again, this is giving the student every opportunity to do the right thing. And when they do, I notice them and praise them with an affirmation. But I hear you. I know some of you are out there saying, look, Dr. Jeff, I've tried that. And there are still some students who are just going to keep doing whatever they want to do. All right, so here's my next step. So after giving every opportunity to do the right thing, now I'm going to talk to the student directly. And there are four questions that I've learned from the Capturing Kids Heart Training. And if you have the chance to attend that training, by the way, I highly recommend. But here they are. What are you doing? What are you supposed to be doing? Are you doing it? What are you going to do about it? <laughs> I know you're skeptical. You're, you're like, how are these questions going to work, right? So let me give you a little model here. So let's say their cell phone is out. And, um, but it could really be any task, off task behavior. Uh, then I'll go up to that student and let's say I've done all the things I've talked about. What are you doing? Uh, a lot of students will just say, oh, and they'll put their phone away and you're done. And conversation over. All right, all right. I know you're saying it doesn't just go as simple as that all the time. So let me go through all the questions. What are you doing? Uh, I'm on my phone. What are you supposed to be doing? my work are you doing it no what are you gonna do about it uh, start my work I know that's probably not the way you wanted to hear it but at that point you say good now did you want to go through all these steps no but for some students that's what they need now what if you immediately jumped into like hey you put your phone away you know the rules now, that student might be saying, I'm just checking my grades. Uh, and they might actually put it away, but you didn't win any points with that student. And the whole class was watching too, and you didn't win any points with them either. Remember how I talked about that prefrontal cortex and how it's developing in adolescence? So they're not necessarily quite yet adults. And that's why we're giving them multiple opportunities for students to do the right thing, because they need that processing time, the multiple opportunities to process, some more than others, especially those who have a lot of things going on, especially those who have been through trauma. And so I actually have a written form of this too. So if the verbal is not working, then I'll have a written think sheet. Is this a punishment? No, it's an opportunity for them to think and help me understand what's going on. Because if they're still acting out and you've done all this, trust me, it's not necessarily you. There's a story behind the story. There's something going on in the life of that student. And I wish the student would just say something like this. Um, Dr. Kim, I'm scared my parents are about to get a divorce. Dr. Kim, uh, my father just lost his job and I don't know how we're gonna make and pay the rent. Dr. Kim, my mother has cancer. And more, if you heard the story behind the story, your heart would break, but oftentimes we don't hear the story behind the story. I know some of you are out there, you're thinking, I came to teach history or English. But as educators, we do teach the whole child. And maybe the most important lesson that that child and the whole class who is watching and knows what's going on will be how you handle that conflict with compassion and grace. They can learn from you how to be a peacemaker. They can learn from you how to have self-control. They can learn from you how to show grace. They can learn from you how to show compassion. You know, maybe the way they learned how to handle conflict was different where they grew up. 
And so when you show and model a better way, you've really given them a great education. I know this is a tough pill to swallow, my Ed family friends, so I encourage you to be in optimal condition when you go to work. A work is not easy. If you haven't seen my video on self-care, I encourage you to do so. Be sure to care for yourself well. This is Dr. Jeff from Ed Family, signing out.